Hello my friends, it is your brother Hampton from Habit Calisthenics. Let's make a video about the grind. We hear a lot in fitness about getting up day after day, week after week, month after month, for years on end, long-term fitness like we talk about. And we've heard a lot about the grind, about getting up when other people are sleeping and working when other people aren't working and getting ahead, not only in fitness, but in business, in life, in a lot of things. And I think the discipline required for that is very important for success in anything. However, first of all, I don't exercise every day. And for me, it is never a grind, actually, to go through the motions of exercising. Your fitness journey, in my opinion, can largely be fun and easy. So here are some thoughts. First of all, the word fitness implies that you are fit for doing something. In most people's cases, when they think physical fitness, they think about going to the gym and lifting weights. So that would make you fit for working hard labor and lifting heavy objects. But let me ask you, do you like working hard labor and lifting heavy objects? I actually do, a lot of people do. It's relaxing to me, it's therapy. But a lot of people don't. In fact, they don't like the idea of working any kind of physical labor. The only reason they do is they want to be muscular or thin and appear like they like it. The thing is, our body does its best to adapt to the lifestyle that it thinks we want. If we are always lifting heavy objects, if we're always pushing ourselves, and it seems like a physical struggle to survive, then it may put on some muscle, it may burn some fat, because it thinks that's what we need to survive. However, if what we really like to do is watch Netflix, sit on the couch, and eat chips, then it gives us lots of fat, it gives us lots of padding for us to be nice and comfortable. You getting fat is not a bug, it's a feature. So our body is often a representation of our lifestyle. What does this have to do with anything? Well, instead of lying to our body and telling our body that we like physical fitness and we, want, and we live a life of hard labor when we actually don't want to and we don't do that, why don't we make our body fit for something that we actually like? Instead of, looking for instead of looking for motivation for physical fitness, why don't you pick something that you are already motivated to do, something you already like, and then build on that? For example, you may hate the idea of going to the gym and lifting weights or running on a treadmill for two hours, but you may enjoy the idea of playing squash or tennis with your friends. The idea of waking up at 5 a.m. and going for a three-mile jog may seem horrible to you, but you may like the idea of sleeping late and gardening. Most people are aware that they have these passions, but they ignore them because they think that in order to be successful, we have to suffer. But if you pick something that you already like doing, preferably something somewhat physical, and you explore that, you may find that your horizons expand. What I encourage you to do is pick a passion and really try to hone your skills at it. For example, in tennis, which you may like doing, look into the techniques, look into what proper form is, and you may find that, well, I really enjoy tennis, but I need to be a bit faster. So from there, you may want to explore push-ups and pull-ups. And it won't just be for looking a certain way or thinking that you have to do push-ups and pull-ups because it's part of normal living. You're doing it because you want to be faster and stronger at tennis. So from here, we see that we've taken an ember of something that we already like and we're stoking it into a fire and turning it into motivation to get up and do things. This motivation is very hard to come across sometimes. But what if what you like, what if everything you like isn't physical at all? What if your favorite thing to do is to sit down and play chess or to sit down and watch TV? First of all, let's set some realistic standards because not everyone needs to be super muscular, super lean and have a six pack. If you're somewhat chubby, but you're happy, you might be better off than a lot of other people, provided that your health and weight isn't so bad that it's a risk to your life. But I would encourage you to explore and hone your passions anyway. Let's say you really like watching anime. Instead of just watching it, if you really, really like it, write articles about it, make videos about it, really think of it from a perspective of how can I share my passion with other people, or if you can, how can I help other people with my passion? Because while this may not be directly physical, what we're actually cultivating is a zest for life. If you don't really like getting up and walking, but you like anime, but you have a reason to get up out of bed every morning and be excited and want to do things, that's actually quite valuable. And when you have this energy, not only will you be more likely to explore physical fitness in the future because you'll have energy and you won't seem exhausted all the time from having a boring, mundane life, but you will also be happier, which, if that is not the ultimate goal, is pretty close to the ultimate goal because we'd rather be chubby and happy than ripped and sad. I hope that makes sense. This is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics, signing out.